Welcome to Cooking from the Cave. I'm Chef Pete Truziak and today I'm going to be demonstrating lobster bisque for you. We're going to start off with the first and main ingredient, lobster. We're going to cook the lobsters. They've already been killed. We're going to cook them so we can poach the meat and then also use the shells to enhance or flavor our uh, shellfish stock over here to really give our lobster bisque a lot of flavor. So let's start off by cooking them. I'm going to get a pot boiling full of water. It's about a, a gallon and a half of water. I'm going to add one diced up or quartered lemon to that. And we're going to make a real flavorful poaching liquid so that flavor will then be transferred into the lobster meat itself. We're going to add two bay leaves, about six peppercorns, and a pinch of salt in here. Once this comes up to boil, we're then going to take our lobster meat, so our tail, and our claws, which I've already separated from the uh, head of the lobster, and those are all going to go into that water. So we can do that now. Whenever you're going to separate any of the membranes on, or any of the sections of the lobster, all I find is that if you grab hold of where the shell is and you'll just twist it, it'll separate it and it'll make it a much cleaner fit. Now, we're not going to use the heads of the lobster only because there's not a lot of meat in there that we can transfer into our lobster bisque. So we're going to use tails and claws mostly. Our water's come up to a boil. We're now going to take our lobster and we're going to drop that in the water. This won't take long. This will be about three to four minutes. We're just going to use the uh, tails as well as the claws for this. And we'll just keep an eye on this till they, uh, the meat cooks and the lobster shells turn red. Our lobster uh, meat has turned nice bright white, and I'll show you that in just a moment when we crack these shells open. But the shells themselves are bright red, and that's a good indication uh, that the lobster's cooked through. We don't want to overcook our lobster because, again, it will be reintroduced to the bisque once we get to the, uh, the end of our recipe. So just make sure you get all that the shells out of here. This liquid... Um, there's not a lot of use for it at this point since we already have the stock. It could have been turned into a lobster stock or a, a shellfish stock, um, but we already have that reserved. So at this point, I'm going to go and dump this water out. These shells will cool down for me. All right, at this point, we're going to separate the meat from the shells. And while I do this, I can also have my uh, stock pot, which I've cleaned out from the uh, poaching. And I can turn that on low heat because uh, we're going to want to saute not only onions and garlic and some of the uh, tomato paste, but also the shells in there for our bisque. So while I'm doing this, I'm going to have that pan heated up. And I, I find that removing the meat with the, uh, a good pair of uh, scissors as well as a good spoon to help scrape that meat out is probably the easiest thing to do. Reserve the meat for a little bit later in the recipe, and uh, I'm going to just work on this while this pan heats up. I'm going to add a little bit of oil to the hot stock pot, swirl that around, add our onions, and this is one large diced onion, and it's a yellow onion, you can use white onions or you can even use red onions if you like. About six cloves of garlic, one teaspoon of dried thyme, I'm going to stir that around for a little bit, just wait for some color to come on the onions as well as the garlic. That thyme, that, that smell of thyme really comes out now. Let it settle there for about 15-20 seconds. Once you start to see color on the onions, go ahead and, and I'm just talking about light color, go ahead and add your Lobster shells. I had some, uh, I reserved my lobster tails from another recipe we did with the uh, lobster sandwiches that we made on the website a, a few weeks ago. So I reserved those in the freezer and I'm just going to stir these around. And what's going to happen is the lobster shells are going to soften a little bit, but they're also going to release a lot of flavor into your stock pot. And then at that point, I'll show you the next step. The lobster as well as the onions have developed some really nice color. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and deglaze the pan with a little whiskey. You could also use red wine or sherry. 
and I added about an ounce of the whiskey. What this does is this will give your bisque a real sweet flavor, also bring out the natural shellfish flavor of the lobster. I'm also going to add at this point, once that whiskey is cooked down, or help deglaze the pan by scraping up the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and add my tomato paste. And just make sure after you add that whiskey, you're going to want to just scrape the bottom so you pick up any of that great coloring that's on the bottom of the pan. I'm going to add two tablespoons of tomato paste. This helps give our bisque that nice bright color that we're looking for. Stir this in. The shells are going to get kind of kind of grab hold of a lot of that. The onions are going to grab hold of it. That acid from the tomato paste will also help deglaze the bottom of the pan. And at this point, we can add our stock and also turn down our temperature to a medium low, I would say. just want to kind of stir everything together. You don't want to agitate it too much, but just kind of make sure that that stock doesn't stay in one area. The shells are around there. And we're now going to bring this up to a boil one more time. And then our stock is boiling at this point. I can go ahead and just kind of remove my spatula and I'm going to turn this down to a simmer for about 20 minutes. 20 minutes, I'm going to remove any large pieces of the shells that I can. You know, I'm not really going to work at this too much because I, I do want to puree some of the shells into the bisque. That will help thicken it. Um, but also, just want to make sure I get anything that's not going to really fit in my blender here. So any of the tails we can pull out. But this is smelling really great. You can almost, I mean, if you were straining, you probably have a pretty nice soup to, to start with, but we want to turn this into a bisque. So I'm going to pour all this into my blender. All the onions, the garlic, everything's going to get chopped up, pureed up. I'm going to strain that out. Our bisque has been pureed up, still slightly warm, so be careful with this at this moment. We're going to pour this back into the stock pot, but what I'm going to use is a very fine mesh strainer so I can collect any of the shells that didn't get pureed up. And just go slow with this, um, and you just want to make sure you get all of them at this point. Now you're going to be, you're going to be pouring a lot of this bisque through this strainer, and it's fairly thick right now, but if you do need to use a spoon, what I do is in a little twirling motion, I'm going to just twirl that spoon around and what that kind of creates is a vortex straight through the strainer, moving around any of the shell bits that are in the strainer right now. And as your strainer empties out, you can pour a little bit more of the bisque through it. Our lobster bisque has been strained. Um, we started off with a quart of uh, seafood stock. I'm going to use two cups of cream. And the cream as well as the shells from the lobster are going to help thicken this up to that consistency we're looking for in a typical bisque. But you do need to bring it up to a boil. And this is where I want you to kind of stay nearby because anytime you boil anything with cream, it has a tendency to form, create that volcano reaction. It's just going to fill up your stock pot, go all over your stove. Just stir this as it boils, or as it's beginning to boil. And then once it comes up to a boil, we can go and uh, we go we can go ahead and lower this and temperature down to a simmer. So I'm going to stir this. It's almost there. And we can bring it down to a simmer. And I'm going to let it simmer now for 15 minutes.
I'm going to add the chopped up lobster to our bisque. And after I do that, I'm going to let it cook for about another maybe one to two minutes. I'm just going to stir that as well. And I'm going to taste it. And from there we can decide, do we need to add anything to it? And I'll show you another trick when uh, seasoning up your bisques. Now if it's not salty enough or it doesn't have enough of that lobster flavor, it's okay to add a little bit more of that whiskey. Um, but I think ours is perfect, so I, I'm not going to add anything to it, maybe just a crack of, some cracked pepper to it. Um, if you're not deglazing with whiskey and maybe you're deglazing with uh, sherry or red wine or white wine even at that point at the beginning, go ahead and add that if you think it needs a little bit more. What that uh, liqueur does or what that liquor does to it will actually bring out a lot of that shellfish flavor and really sweeten this up. But this is, this is really, really good. So I'm happy with this. I'm going to stir this for maybe another 20 seconds. And while that's finishing cooking. I just cut up some toast points to make crostinis. I'm going to throw these under the broiler really fast. And I'll come back and we'll do our plate up. Our crostini came out of the oven. They're nice and golden brown. We're going to go ahead and ladle up our bisque. When chopping up the lobster, make sure the uh, bits are large enough so that you can get some, uh, so your diner or your guests can get some little chunks of lobster in with it. This already tastes great. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay that toast point right on top, sprinkle a little fresh thyme on it, and there you go, lobster bisque from Cooking from the Cave. I'm Chef Pete Trusiak, and I will see you real soon.